Christmas fan. Um, <laughs> he's following this story on the Flint water crisis. Ryan Burrow, thanks for joining us here in St. Louis on the Big 550 KTRS. Uh, good morning to you. Yeah, the magic number's one, so anxiously awaiting the game with the Brewers. Yes, yeah, so Although I, you, guys have a, you guys have a great series coming up here with the Giants. Yeah, teams, and... Uh, magic numbers one, and that's how many cans of Vaseline John Lester oh, used gosh. in his glove yesterday, I believe. <laughs> or that's that's the number of times he'd like to throw over to first base, but he's afraid to. Hey, he had some, he had some decent plays in the field yesterday. You gotta give him a little bit of credit. Come on, he's he's a Cy Young candidate this year, that's for sure. But uh, all right, let's talk about. You want to talk about Flint? Let's talk you about Flint. Talk about, because you want to talk about Donald Trump's visit, or you want to talk about uh, what's going on with the investigation? Well, first of all, let's talk about Donald Trump because he said he was going there during the primaries. Never did. Now he shows up. Tell us what happened yesterday. Yeah, a little bit of a surprise visit. I mean, we didn't get uh, notice about this until earlier this week uh, that he was going to make this stop off in Flint. He continues to try to woo the African American vote. He's hitting uh, some of these uh, kind of inner city communities, including Flint, which has been dogged by this water crisis for well over a year, close to two years now, maybe a little over two years, depending on when you want to start this thing. So he was going to go meet with a bunch of pastors, a few dozen of them, and then uh, speak uh, after talking with people about the Flint water crisis and the things that they've overcome. He begins his speech, and if you've had a chance to see it, uh, he's actually interrupted when he starts kind of going on his campaign tension against Hillary Clinton. Uh, the, one of the pastors stepping in and saying, essentially, we didn't bring you here to talk to give a campaign speech in fact the exact quote from reverend faith green timmons when she cut him off said mr trump i invited you here to thank us for what we've done in flint not give a political speech and he kind of changed course he said okay i get it and then kind of went on uh with his uh with his little speech um now this morning he he has kind of a different tune here he basically said the hit was on he you know suggesting it was sabotage uh he said that this uh reverend uh, faith green timmons uh was uh, uh, noticeably nervous before the speech, and, and he thinks that this was well-prepared, that she was going to interrupt him no matter what. So uh, he thinks the hit was on. So now he's going after the pastor oh, who, who invited him to speak at his campaign or at, at, at the church. What did, he, did he say anything about Flint and the water crisis? Well, I mean, essentially that uh, look who the leadership was, look who was in control, look at how things, how messed up things were. And I'm not really embellishing what he said. I mean, that's, that's essentially it. Look at, look at how things turned out. Your leaders don't care about you. Um, but I would be someone who could come in and, and fix this quickly. But, uh, you know, obviously the, uh, what, what he was going to do uh, was kind of hindered a little bit there. So he said it was a good meeting. He said that everyone there was, uh, was wonderful. They treated him very well. Um, you know, some of the reports on the ground where, you know, he did get the cold shoulder in some locations, but, um, you know, he's trying to make the effort, uh, that's for sure, and, and I think people appreciated him uh, coming and, and, you know, putting the spotlight back on Flint. That's, you know, what a big big portion of this is, is getting the media attention back on Flint because this issue has not been resolved yet. Did he, did he drink the local water? I did not see him drink the local water at all. Uh, you know, that's, that's a great question. Uh, did not see that. Now, in, in terms of what actually happened in Flint, didn't somebody plead no contest? Yeah, Corinne Miller, she's one of the people who's charged uh, with willful neglect of duty in connection with the Flint, Flint water crisis. Her job in the state uh, health department was to kind of track uh, this spike in Legionnaire's disease around the county, which would include Flint. They had 42 uh, in the time that uh, she was doing her research in that short period of time since the uh, uh, the water crisis broke out, and uh, she did not publish that information. In fact, uh, uh, apparently, according to prosecutors, told um, uh, employees to delete some of the information. Uh, so, you know, essentially caught red-handed uh, in this, and uh, being one of the eight uh, or nine people that have so far been charged in this case, uh, she decided to uh, accept the, the, the charges, uh, or the single charge of willful neglect, um, in turn getting a couple of the other charges tossed out, but she will help uh, prosecutors uh, as they continue to dig deeper. And obviously, uh, we don't know how high this is going to go. Prosecutors and, and the people investigating say, uh, you know, they're, they're not done with charges yet, and this thing, who knows, could go up to the governor's office. When Donald Trump was saying, blame those who are in charge, was he talking about the Republican governor of Michigan, or was he talking about the Democratic president of the United States? That, that's a great question, right? Because it's, it's really, um, well, it's quite popular to pile on the governor of Michigan. 
Michigan for his handling of the situation, but it's pretty clear, too, based on the uh, response from Karen Weaver, the mayor of Flint, Michigan, who's you know been busy dealing with this situation, that she wasn't pleased with uh, Donald Trump coming. Uh, she called it a photo op. Uh, she said that uh, while she and others are busy trying to clean up the problem, he's just coming in to swoop in and, and you right. know. But ultimately, <laughs> but ultimately, it was the state that decided to make the switch, right, to save money. It was a it, state decision? It, it was. It was the state's decision, you know, at, at, uh, you know the advice of, of people uh, in Flint as to how this would go about. Remember, this was supposed to be a cost-saving measure to uh, draw water uh, from Detroit rather than draw the lake water. And, um, you know, this was supposed to just be kind of a temporary Band-Aid to draw from the Flint River, which ended up being, being a disaster, uh, you yeah. know, big problem. And the water is, is still very much tainted, is it not? Well, they're going through the process right now, the slow process of replacing the pipes, uh, getting everything back up in order. Everyone should have distributed to homes and businesses filters now on these uh, on the sinks. Uh, it doesn't obviously help out with hoses and showers and things like that. Uh, people are being told to limit their time. When President Obama came there earlier this year, he said, look, uh, you know, I mean, it's it's not a death, death sentence that there was lead. Obviously, there are some things that need to get hashed out, but if you drink the filtered water, you'll be fine. And so far, the tests on the, on the filtered water have been fine. Ryan Burrow, ladies and gentlemen, ABC News correspondent. His only flaw, he's, he's a Cub fan. Uh, Ryan, have a good week. Thanks for checking in. All right, take care. Uh, Michigan Governor Rick Schneider uh, is quoted as saying, we all failed the families of Flint, Michigan.